Uh, Mr. President, at a time when there are multiple threats facing Europe, it's right for the EU to look at improving its level of intergovernmental cooperation in terms of the common security and defence policy. As ever, the proposals have been met in this House by some with false accusations that they amount to the creation of an EU army and a concerted effort to undermine the role of NATO. The roots of the CSDP have always rested upon the absolute respect for the member states' sovereignty in this key area of national policy and acknowledging NATO as the mainstay of European defence. The conclusions of the most recent Foreign Affairs Council uphold these key principles and its support for strengthening Europe's industrial defence base, eliminating duplication and waste in certain areas of procurement and exploring the possibility of greater levels of integration militarily for those member states that are willing to do so under the PESCO are all to be welcomed and respect the principles of sovereignty. The UNAV for Atalanta mission stands as a strong example of what cooperation at EU level can achieve, bringing together member states' defence capabilities alongside the EU's unique soft and hard power capabilities was able to deliver a comprehensive defeat of piracy in the Indian Ocean. And most importantly, NATO welcomed this cooperation and of course it was commanded by my, uh, the Royal Navy uh, based in my London constituency, but that's an aside. But ultimately, and the thing I want to make the point to the High Rep today, is the United Kingdom, after Brexit, must stay plugged into the CFSP and the CSDP. That will be my lifelong ambition post-Brexit.